Welcome to the Grand Rapids, Michigan, Kent County Residential Real Estate Market Update with data through November 2021. My name is Rodney Constable. I'm a realtor with Century 21 Affiliated out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Year-over-year, home prices are up 15.4% in the Grand Rapids area, with the average home selling for $309,302. One year ago, the average home was selling for $268,046. For years, I've heard people saying things like home prices can't continue to go up. Well, when I hear things like that, I I think about the input costs to building a home. And some of the major input costs to building a home are land, labor, materials, and regulatory costs. So if somebody thinks that home prices cannot continue to rise in the future, what they're basically saying is that Land is going to get cheaper and more plentiful. Labor is going to get cheaper and more plentiful. Materials are going to get cheaper and more plentiful. And the government's going to make regulatory costs of building a house cheaper and easier. And guys, when we just think about these four input costs, land, labor, materials, and regulatory costs, do we really think that any of these input costs to building a home are going to fall in the future? I doubt it. So if land, labor, materials, and regulatory costs are going to continue to go up, then home prices probably will continue to rise in the future as well. The average home is selling after being on the market for just 15 days. When we compare that to the inventory of unsold homes, those homes have been on the market for an average of 75 days. What these two data points tell us is that if a home is property priced, it will sell in a relatively short period of time. However, if a home is not properly priced for its condition, location, and amenities, it will stay on the market for an extended period of time, right now about two and a half months. Next, let's take a look at year-to-date new listings versus the same period one year ago. So again, we're looking at the first 11 months, right, the data through the end of November, the first 11 months of 2021 compared to the first 11 months of 2020. And we can see that in 2021, there has been 5.5% fewer listings that have come to market in Kent County than what we had in 2020. Now, when we compare this information in a numerical format, what we can see is that so far for the first 11 months of 2021, there's been 9,591 listings that have come to market versus 10,152 listings during the first 11 months of 2020. So we're down 561 listings versus where we were one year ago. And then if we go down to 2016, and look at a longer trend, what we can see is that in 2016, for the first 11 months of the year, there was 11,531 listings that had come to market. So right now, for 2021, we're down 1,940 listings versus where we were in 2016, right? 1,900 fewer listings for buyers to choose from than what we had in 2016. That is a 16.82% differential. So the long run here, guys, over the last six years of data, right, when we compare 2016, 2017 on uh, through 2021, we can see that the trend has been, uh, especially since 2016, that we're seeing fewer and fewer listings come to market. Now, we had fairly similar numbers for 2017, 2018, and 2019, just a little over 11,000 each year. In 2020, it dropped off, and then again in 2021. So part of this, obviously, is going to be because of COVID. So we'll have to see, you know, hopefully we'll start pulling out of COVID here uh, sometime soon, right? And we'll start to see those numbers climb. But right now, Uh, You know, we are seeing fewer and fewer listings come to market in Kent County over the last few years, and uh, that is one data point, and we'll talk more about this uh, throughout the, the video, but that's definitely one data point that is contributing, seriously contributing to Uh, the rising home prices here in Kent County is uh, the lack of inventory, right? The lack of listings coming to market. Next, let's take a look at year-to-date closed transactions versus the same period one year ago. So again, first 11 months of 2021 versus the first 11 months of 2020. And so these are actually the transactions that went all the way through. They were closed. Now, the good news is we're up in this category. We're up three-tenths of one percent. 
on a numerical format, what that means is we've closed 25 more homes this year so far for the first 11 months of 2021 than what we did in 2020. Not a lot, but hey, we're going in the right direction. When we compare where we're at so far for this year versus where we were in 2016, however, we can see that we've closed 658 fewer transactions for the first 11 months of 2021 versus where we were in 2016. That is a 7.09% differential. Uh, and again, if we go down to the bottom of the chart, tw start in 2016 and work our way back up, you can see that the trend has been fewer and fewer closed transactions. Uh, similar numbers in you know 2018, 2019, and 2020, right? Uh, 8,500 plus. Um, but uh, we've definitely been going in the wrong direction. The great news is we're at least ticking up a little bit, right? In 2018, 2019, and 2020, uh, so you know, for the first 11 months of each one of those years, we had done 8,500 plus. At least in 2021, we've seen 8,600, right? 8,618 so far. So uh, hopefully, you know, that is a, a sign of good things to come, where we will continue to see more and more closed transactions, and uh, and the trend will start to uh, really reverse itself, and we'll get closer to the numbers that we saw in uh, 2016, hopefully over the next few years. Next, let's take a look at the average months of inventory in Kent County. So far for 2021, we have 0.6 months of inventory. Guys, that's about 18 plus or minus days, okay? That is not a lot of inventory at all. Now, what this means is that if no new homes came to market based on our current sell rate, we would be completely sold out of homes in about 18 days. In the entire county of Kent County, we would be completely sold out of homes in the entire county in about 18 days. Guys, that is extremely low inventory. Now, when we go down through the data here, and in this category, I do have nine years of data available to me, where in some of the other categories, I only have six years of data available to me, so that's why uh, there's a difference in the, uh, in the amount of data here. But if we look down this chart, what we can see is that the highest inventory number that we've had over the last nine years was back in 2014 at 2.3 months of inventory. And guys, I can tell you that that is extremely low inventory. And we'll talk a little bit more about that over the next few uh, few minutes. But this, you know, this is a real problem, right? Is we just don't have the inventory to support the demand and just the ba basic economics of supply and demand, right? Just the, the, the bare bones basics of anything. In this case, we're talking housing, of course, is that there's just not a lot of availability of homes for people to buy. And when there's a demand for homes in the Grand Rapids area and low supply of homes, that is probably going to continue to cause upward pressure on pricing for the foreseeable future. But let's talk a little bit more about that over the next few minutes and get a little bit more granular. So why does inventory matter? Well, as we can see here, if you have between one and two months of inventory, you probably are going to experience double-digit price appreciation on homes. And that is exactly what we have seen for many years here in the Grand Rapids area. If you're running between three and four months of inventory, you would generally experience single-digit price appreciation. If the inventory built to where you had between five and six months of inventory, this is more of a normal, balanced, or neutral market where you might experience some price appreciation, but it would more than likely be in the low single digits. And if you're under five to six months of inventory, this is considered a seller's market. And that's exactly what we have seen for many years here in Grand Rapids. If you're over six months of inventory, this is considered a buyer's market. And if your inventory built to between seven and eight months, that's when you would most likely experience single digit price depreciation. And then if the inventory built to nine months plus, that's when you would likely see double digit price depreciation. So seven to eight months of inventory, single digit price depreciation, nine months plus, that's when we start to get into double digit price depreciation. 
If you would like to learn even more about the likelihood of home prices rising in the future, I would highly suggest you watch my information-packed Will Home Prices Continue to Rise video, which is out on my YouTube channel. I will also put a link to that video in the description box below this video. So what are the next steps? Watch my Will Home Prices Continue to Rise video. Watch my other YouTube videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for ongoing real estate education. Please give me a thumbs up on this video and other videos that you like. Leave a comment on my videos and share my videos on my YouTube channel with your friends, family, and colleagues. Also, please feel free to connect with me via social media and call me at 616-258-4782 if you are looking to buy or sell a home in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. Thank you so much for being on this video with me. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.